Welcome back. We need a source for the images that will populate our image gallery, and the Pexels API is a great resource for this. Let's go to Pexels.com. I'm at Pexels.com, and I've already signed up for a free account. You can see my little image icon up here. So go ahead and pause the video and sign up for your free account now. And when you've finished, come back and continue the video. Okay, we're back. Congrats on signing up for your own free Pexels.com account. Now you should be able to go to the profile menu here at the top right, and from there you want to go down to the image and video API that you see here. So I'm going to click that, and now I'm on the API page. There's a couple of buttons on this page. One says your API key, and the other is documentation. What you want to do now is click your API key, and then copy the key that they give you there. It should be a long string of random letters and possibly numbers and characters like that. I can't show you mine because Pexels doesn't really make it easy to change or delete your API key. So you never want to share your API key with anyone else. And of course, we're going to list it in a file that does not go to your GitHub repository either. So you won't find my API key in the source code for this course because you never want to share your environment variables or your API keys and we'll store it as an environment variable. You never want to share those in GitHub or with anyone else. So this is your own personal key to the Pexels API. Once you've copied that key, let's go back to VS Code and store it in a secure file. We're back in VS Code, and now just click on your package JSON, as we want to be in the top level and not inside of the source directory, and now click the new file icon. And this new file we're going to create starts with a period, so dot env dot local. That's the name of the file we want to create. Press enter. And now inside of here, I'm going to name an environment variable. And I'm going to call this pexels, all uppercase, underscore API, underscore key, and then the equal sign. This is where you need to paste the value that you copied from the pexels API key. So this is where your API key value goes. No quotes, by the way, just the full string. You do not need to wrap this string in quotes as an environment variable. Again, I can't show you mine, so I'm not going to show you my value that I paste into this file. Go ahead and paste yours in here, and then we'll move on. Okay, I've saved my API key in my .env.local file, and I've closed the file, so I'm not sharing my value with you. But notice in the file tree how it is grayed out over here, and that's because that pattern for the file is listed in our .gitignore file, and that ensures that we will not send that .env.local file to GitHub, because we never want to share those values with anyone else. When we deploy an application, we take those environments variables and put them in settings in our host wherever we deploy our application. So we don't need that .env.local file for deployment, we just need the values out of it to share with our host. So just be careful with your API key. Now let's go back and quickly look at the Pexels API documentation. I'm back on pexels.com and I'm on the API page once again and instead of going to the your API key with that button, let's click on documentation. We're going to use a couple of the endpoints from this Pexels API. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit past the introduction, and one of the endpoints we're going to need is the search. So let's go down, and also, while we're here, I'm going to highlight the authorization, and look at this example just under Bash. We're not going to use the example they show under JavaScript, but I'll show you how to set what we are going to use, and it's going to be similar to Bash. So we're going to set an authorization header, and from there we will insert our API key, whatever we have in that environment variable that we just set. And we can send those in the header of a fetch request, and that's how we will authorize our requests to the API. And I'll show you how to do that when we construct that fetch function. Let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit further now, and we'll look at not the pagination either, although we'll use that later. We're going to look at how we can search for photos. So find the search for photos, and it's going to give us this URL, and you might have to highlight and possibly scroll. No, it ends right there. No scrolling there. We just scroll over here to see an actual search, because here it ends with the search keyword. That's the endpoint. But no 
notice they send a parameter here. So the parameter is query, and then it's set equal to whatever is being searched. So here they search for nature photos. This per page param is not required, it's optional. So we won't use that. But that's one example of the URL we will search. So we'll attach a param for whatever we are searching for. The other example, and this is what we show on our homepage in our image gallery, are the curated photos. So we just show those as a default. So here it says curated photos, and you can see the URL for the endpoint for curated also. And here, notice there are no additional params that are required. We could set a per page param, but we're just going to accept the default. But what we want to look at for both curated and for search, as we construct our fetch function and know what type of data we want to receive back, are the example responses they show us that we see here on the right. So let's scroll down to where we can see more of that. There we go. And we're getting a huge JSON object here. And notice there are some values in the, the uh, top level of the object, like page and per page. But when you get to photos, photo is in, or photos is an array. And then inside of that array, you're going to have an object for every different photo that you receive, including a source that has its own object with different values for images as well, or at least it's the same image, but you're going to get different sizes and different formats as you see portrait, landscape, tiny, small, medium. So we'll go ahead and get some of those. Now in the next tutorial, we're going to work with this documentation to set the values we expect to receive and we're going to use Zod to do that, which is type safe and lets us set schemas that define the data that we will get back and then infer those TypeScript types.